what transformations could you see in the next future in the telco space? I get a lot of questions in London, actually, about wh why don't we have download rates of terabits per second and uh, struggle so much still with megabits per second download rate? What has gone wrong is a huge telco industry and still we're struggling so much. So now those people who design these systems understand they're extraordinarily complex uh, to build a system which is globally compatible, uh, delivering consistent rate. But there's a, there's a good question whether we can do better than what we have done in the past. And um, transformations always happen, you know, if you stay really focused and you know what you're doing. And if you are following a bit of business advice, people always tell you, you know, be effective and be efficient. Be effective means do the right thing and be efficient, do the things right. So in the light of that, uh, let's examine a little bit whether we can be a little bit more effective and a little bit more efficient. So on the, on the, on the effectiveness side, um, you know, mentors, business mentors, entrepreneur mentors, they always tell you what you should do is, you know, forget about your weaknesses and rather focus on your strengths. So don't spend too much time improving your weakness. Uh, just focus really on the strength. So let's examine a little bit the cellular system from that point of view. What is the top number one weakness item? What's the top number one strength item? So when it comes to uh, weakness, uh, you need to understand uh, how capacity has scaled over the, the last uh, 30, 40 years. And that increase of capacity by a factor of million, maybe like two, three, four million right now, has been contributed to by, let's say, technology of factor five, spectrum of factor 20, and uh, making cells smaller, actually a factor of 1,600. So you understand that uh, you know, the real impact is of making things smaller, meaning scaling the whole system, right? When it comes to scalability, there's one thing which really, really holds us back, and that's the core network. So there is a question to be asked whether we could get away without the core network actually being present. If you cut out the core, you cut out some functionalities which you want to rescue. You don't want to cut out those. And uh, 3GBP is very good in all uh, AAA self-education type of stuff billing. Um, the core is responsible for mobility management, handover, etc. very good designs. And also it's responsible for quality of service. So the question is, can you have a system without core uh, doing these three functionalities. That's what we're working on, and it turns out that's doable. So once you get rid of the core, meaning literally not of the functionalities, but rather of the way how it is constructed, dedicated cabling to the packet and serving gateways, it's really holding back all this type of scalability. And if you look at the history of the core network, in 4G we have the core because we had it in 3G, in 3G we have the core because we had it in 2G, and in 2G we had the core because the internet wasn't there yet, and nobody believed the internet could ever deliver what we wanted to do. So it's a historic artifact which kind of sneaked in. I think 3G we should uh, really focus what it is really good at, and that the strength is really the the interface, right? So being able to capitalize on the wireless edge, and 3GBP is the only community which is able to bill on that on a monthly recurring uh, way. IEEE has managed that, right? So you can buy a Wi-Fi hotspot, and uh, it's, it's essentially buy its one off, that's it. Whereas 3GBP really bills you consistently every month. Hey, that's a real strength. Why not build virtual billing engines which are able to actually bill you any type of technology? Uh, all different Wi-Fi technologies, uh, gigahertz systems appearing, anything you want, but it's giving you essentially the ability to have a single point of contact which uh, you can, can approach when you have a problem with your wireless interface. That's something if, if I had to focus on as a 3GB community I would focus on, right? So that's from the uh, effectiveness point of view. From the efficiency point of view, question is can we do things a little better, quicker, um, et cetera. So one thing which clearly holds us maybe a little bit at ransom is the whole uh, G salad, right? So we go from 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G. Always 10 years it takes, and no matter how hard we try to make that short, and the reason is because everybody has to come around the table and agree, right? So it's handset manufacturer, base station manufacturer, core network, uh, 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 serving gateway and packet gateway manufacturer. So everybody has to be uh, agree on that. It takes time. They need to meet physically, et cetera. So the, the question is, you know, if we got rid of the Gs, would that help us with the evolution? And uh, in fact, it's only Microsoft and the cellular community which kind of 
still was with the generation thing, and Microsoft just announced they would get rid of the generation thing. So currently, Cell is the only community at global scale which still goes by huge generation chunks to huge generation chunks. Question is, couldn't we just do it by features, right? From an investment point of view, it becomes very interesting because you're hedging essentially not per technology but per feature in a technology set. Um, it, it becomes very interesting uh, from, a, from a deployment and, and innovation point of view. So let's examine that. So I don't have an answer saying that we should do it or we shouldn't be doing it, but I think it's, it's, it's worth discussing that. Another thing worth discussing is uh, whether we could maybe do standard, standards operations a little bit more efficient. And uh, standards are very important, they're very complex, we understand that, so we're not doubting that. But of course, 10 years are 10 years, right? Think about it, 3G, we developed it over 10 years, probably a bit longer, and we used it, what, two years? I used it two years, right? So I jumped from 2G, basically, to 4G. Uh, so we, we don't want that. We want really, um, you know, very short development times and long usage times, because the other way around is a bit silly. It's as if, as if you're cooking a meal for one week and then you eat it in five minutes, right? It doesn't make sense. So um, Etsy has started to look into this. So the CTO of Etsy said, hey, why don't we look into different methods? Let's say less physical meetings. Um, let's do maybe crowdsourcing of standards, opening up the process. So I think all that will come together and accelerate innovation in the standardization space, right? And the third thing in terms of efficiency, it's really about takeoff, deployment, and all that. And I feel we need a flip of business models there. Um, maybe the whole shift from B2C to B2B, like business to consumer uh, to business to business type of models, will be a very interesting space to watch. Can you elaborate a bit more on the business to business context for mobile operators? Right, so B2B is, I think, something which, which we will see how this plays out. So it really means that here we're not actually offering the cell infrastructure for you as a consumer to make a phone call or a data call. That is really for, let's say, a really heavy oil and gas industry to optimize the operations on the oil rigs or a transport company being more efficient in how they, that the trucks are going through the country. Now, General Electric has done a really interesting study in 2012 um, saying that if we improved efficiencies of industries, oil, gas, transport, et cetera, et cetera, by just 1%, we would have a, an enormous financial gain, right? And uh, they referred to this as the industrial internet because it gets data, real-time data from a lot of sensors. It acts on that with actuators, et cetera. So I can tell you with my company being in the oil and gas space and the transport space, we can do much better than 1%. So actually the financial returns by using a wireless ICT infrastructure in heavy industries is much higher than with the consumers, right? So companies like Ericsson, and Cisco, they start to understand that. They really go for these different verticals and start rolling out their technology. And that may also totally flip the business model because currently in the consumer space, it's really about acquiring uh, your, your customers being the consumer, and that is what the operator does. So the operator has a, the, the customer, and uh, they would procure different vendors to give their technology. So you'll see a lot of competition between the Huawei's, the Ericsson's, et cetera, et cetera. Now, with the Ericsson's now going directly to the heavy, to the vertical industries, right? They will go in, lock in the telco equipment, and then actually the whole thing will flip because Ericsson will procure the operators. They will say which operator can offer me the best deal. So it's an interesting space. We, we, we don't know how this will play out, but it gives a, a, a lot of uh, food for thought on how business model and telco space will play out in the next 10 years. 